I was cutting apart today uh, an Inventor HSM 2016 and I thought this was a good part to demonstrate something that I like to do whenever I can. And that is to use adaptive clearing as a stratagem for replacing two or three different tools and tool pads. And uh, follow me as I go through and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. But first off though, on this particular part I have a problem that I have to fix and I didn't use Inventor 2015 a whole lot so it's hard for me to really gauge what 2015 was like with 2016 I'm gonna make a better effort to learn the program uh, one of the things I have always liked with Solid Edge was direct editing and uh, I think that they've improved the direct editing capabilities in Inventor this year so anyway let's repair this part left click click on the direct edit I want to snap to that and accept it same thing for this one snap to and accept it and I'm sure there's all kinds of keyboard shortcuts for this thing I just don't know what it is in any case accept all that and escape and we're done with that now let us go about setting up the tool path. First off, we go to setup and your part number, comment if necessary. Uh, once again I prefer to have a nut shape for my stock already cut the size and we're going to select the first in the pull down menu to orient our origin this lines up our Z this will flip it so it's going in the correct direction uh, then I have to correct the X axis and that is good our stock point and there you go Now I noticed that this is in metric, which is not what I work in, so I'm going to go in there and correct the dimensions. Tools, document settings, units. This is where you can assign your dimensions to the part, and I'm sure that you can set up a template for this too. I just haven't done so yet. I'm still learning the program, obviously. Apply. Clubs. Now, I'm going to use a 3D adaptive toolpath for this. My tool is going to be a quarter inch bullnose end mill. But on this, I happen to have a 0.03 in the carousel. Uh, if I had a 0.045 or 0.06, I could achieve a smoother profile on the chamfer and the corner round uh, with fewer cuts, but I do not have one in stock today, so this is what I'm going to use. And this is part of the benefit of what I'm talking about. I can make anything work here, uh, just as long as I've got a radius. So let's select that. According to the feeds and speeds in the volume mill, this is a little slow. We'll jump it up to 80 inches. I'm still learning here, so I have to kind of feel my way into what's really the correct speeds and feeds. Don't worry about geometry. It will worry about it itself. Once again, on clearance heights, I don't need to be that high above the top of the part. Point one is fine. Point one is fine. Stock top is fine. Now, on the bottom, I want to select this surface, which will be the side of the cavity that I will cut as a second operation. And I want to cut down into that cavity so that I can make sure I get past the corner on the bullnose mill. So minus 05 should be plenty. That sets that up. Uh, 
accepted it first. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Anyway, let's go in there and make it behave now. Optimal load at that speed, I'm going to set to be about a 0.06. Tolerance of 1,000. And I need to go down about 0.54 in total depth. So we'll do a 0.27 here. A fine step down in order to achieve a good finish on this particular part. We'll just go like that. Do not want to leave any stock anywhere. No engagement feed rate can be 200. And that all looks wonderful. Let's see what we get. Now I want you to pay particular attention. We've managed to accomplish three different types of tool paths with one tool path and with one end mill. We've got our chamfer, we've got our corner round, and then of course we've got our regular cut. Let's see what it looks like. There you have it. The actual part's going to be a little smoother than that, but once again, I think you can see if I stepped up on the radius on the corner of that end mill, uh, it would be a whole different ball game on how smooth everything is. But I have flat to round surfaces and I have everything I need and it has taken me six minutes to cut this part and I only had to do one tool path. I have six of these to cut, so sitting there and creating two more additional tool paths I didn't need and zeroing in another tool, or actually another two tools that I didn't need, all takes time. Uh, the only thing I can say is, is adaptive is, is a wonderful time saver. I am tickled to death to be using this thing. Anyway, thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video.